How is everyone? I gotta say, I really enjoyed the food. It reminded me of the kind of food I eat in Alaska. That's where I'm from. Um, so I wanted to uh, talk to you today. I want to first thank for allowing me to participate in this conference. Um, but I'm going to talk about uh, Algonquin College, which is located in Canada, and about their campus transformation and how they became a sustainability leader. And I think this will actually tie in very well with Dr. Underwood's uh, point about enough with the talking, enough about the conferences and the studies. Let's actually take action and get results. And that's exactly what this campus did. Um, so I'm actually, like I said, I'm from Alaska. And you might say, what does someone from Alaska have to do with Guam and being on an island? And I like to think of Alaska as an island. We are not connected to the lower 48 with power. We are remote and isolated. We value self-sufficiency and sustainability. And we also struggle with very high energy costs because of our reliance on diesel for most of our power generation. And uh, I know that in Guam, they talk about uh, high energy costs and I, uh, a couple years back, completed an energy project with the Lincoln Peninsula School District, and I was wondering if anybody wanted to guess how much they paid per kilowatt hour at a community called Perryville, Alaska. Any guesses? More? More? A dollar. So they actually paid a dollar per kilowatt hour in Perryville, Alaska. So, you know, when we talk to them, uh, just know that we understand those challenges. Um, I also think this kind of uh, vision, this program will help uh, University of Guam achieve their Vision 2025 plan, and it will help them incorporate modernization and infrastructure improvements, as well as improve their community uh, engagement and their ability to get credit for innovative things they're doing on campus. <clears throat> so, just a little background. Uh, Algonquin College is located in Ottawa, Canada. That's in the Ontario province. And they are a public college, like UOG. Uh, they have two-year and four-year degrees, but they also have apprenticeship programs and trade, trade certifications. Uh, their buildings uh, range in age from new to 48 years old. And UOG has buildings that are over 50 years old, so similar there. They have about 1.8 million square feet. So they're about three times the size of UOG's campus, which is approximately 600,000 square feet. Um, but they spend about uh, $4.2 million on energy. UOG, by comparison, spends uh, $2.7 million on uh, electricity right now. So much smaller campus, but uh, you're paying about 60% of the utility. So a uh, program like this would benefit UOG because even a little bit of savings is going to have a greater benefit, greater impact on your campus. <clears throat> so Algonquin College in 2011, they are facing much of the same problems as UOG and many other universities that are represented here. Uh, they were looking at rising energy costs, aging and inefficient infrastructure, air quality problems in existing buildings, and a growing deferred maintenance burden that was uh, approaching $80 million. They also wanted to be more sustainable, but they had limited internal resources and almost zero funding to get this done. So this diagram is demonstrating four phases of improvements that they achieved there. Um, the first one uh, was focused on conservation measures, so your standard HVAC lighting upgrades and water conservation. Uh, the second phase also incorporated, incorporated a full-time sustainability coordinator. So the savings from this program actually funded a full-time position. And the third phase had to do with more intense infrastructure improvements. They included a central plant upgrade as well as a cogeneration. Uh, system, so heat and power of about two uh, megawatts out there. And then the final phase, they expanded the cogeneration and ended up putting in about another two megawatts. 
as well as microgrid controls, more energy management systems, and so on. So, and this took place between 2012 and 2017. So a little bit more about this strategic partnership between Siemens and Algonquin College. Uh, like I was saying, the first uh, four phases included energy and water reduction. It included the cogeneration plant and microgrid technology. It included an integrated energy management system and also systems to regulate energy supply and use. In summary, it saved them about $3.2 million per year, and it allowed them to tick off about $24 million worth of deferred maintenance. And this deferred maintenance was paid for with the savings. In addition, they were able to secure about $3 million in incentives to help contribute to that program. But as far as the Siemens partnership goes, it was more than just uh, upgrading their buildings and fixing their systems, we also were able to incorporate an innovation center, a living laboratory. And what this means is that the students uh, participating in this uh, program, I think the picture is actually of their um, engineering building. Maybe <laughs> you confirm on that, but essentially the uh, control system will allow the students to see real time what is going on in their buildings and then how they can optimize that building and uh, really gives them some context for their studies. In addition, there's a sustainability program and uh, we also uh, help them create uh, sustainability modules and also help them with an energy management graduate certification program. Siemens being Siemens, we also help them with a mechatronics program, which teaches robotics for industrial manufacturing and their certifi certifications that go along with that. So I think I mentioned earlier that these, these improvements to their campus, these savings funded a full-time energy uh, coordinator and they focus on promoting sustainability and creating energy awareness in campus uh, for what they're doing there. Um, they also really targeted, they work with facilities and they targeted stakeholders to increase behavior modification in certain areas. So for example, they had um, an initiative to help turn off computers. And this initiative, after it was rolled out, saved the university an additional $30,000 per year. Um, the, this sustainability coordinator promotes energy efficiency and sustainability both internally and externally. And they also help brand Algonquin College as a sustainability leader. So again, I could see a lot of this being applicable to UOG and other universities. Um, this is a pretty busy slide, but the main takeaways would be um, how the campus transformed from transactional upgrades, which would be you know, changing out light bulbs like in kind to a transformational type of program. And this really had economic, social and environmental uh, benefits to Algonquin College. So, as I mentioned earlier, their original energy spend was about $4.2 million, and they ended up saving, through these four phases, about $3.2 million. So they were able to reduce their energy purchase by 76%. So, that's pretty impressive. 76% reduction. Now, I do want to point out that the first two phases were focused on, maybe it was the three phases, um, cons energy conservation and infrastructure improvements. And these alone accounted for about 40% of that $3.2 million savings. So again, those things are valuable. They typically have longer, pay or, excuse me, shorter paybacks. And by addressing efficiency first, you don't have to build so much generations cogeneration system that they ended up building was smaller because they became efficient first and then they built cogeneration and the renewable power. Um, so the savings from this project helped fund about $47 million worth of improvements and the savings were used to secure financing and the financing was linked to the savings per year. So although projects were paid for out of the college's operating budget, they did not have to increase their operating budget because it was all 
based on the savings from that budget. Um, in addition to the savings, other things that helped fund this project were incentives. So they had over $3 million of incentives, of which the Ontario Power Authority contributed $2.2 million. So the utility was a, definitely a partner in this. And then the college also contributed about $4 million of their own state appropriations or province appropriations to go toward this project. So in total, over the four phases, they were able to achieve about $55 million worth of work. So that's pretty substantial. So this, is, this slide is just to kind of give you an idea of how they got it done, how they secured financing. Um, in essence, the college decided that they were going to go through a third party financier who set up an escrow account to pay for the construction of the project. Uh, Algonquin College hired Siemens, to, Siemens Canada in this case, to do the work. And because there was an escrow account, when, as Siemens did work, they could get paid incrementally as work was done. Once the project was complete, then Algonquin College was uh, to pay, repay for construction with the savings achieved. They repaid the financier. And if, for example, savings were not achieved, then Siemens provided a guarantee so that the difference uh, would be repaid to Algonquin College. So Siemens was guaranteeing that they could make these payments. So that's kind of how the, the cash flow. So what's next for Algonquin College? They've already achieved so much. They have four phases. Well, they have a fifth phase they're working on with Siemens. We continue to have the dialogue to achieve their I mean, they're calling it a carbon neutrality goal. I think UOG has a net zero goal similar to this. Uh, so we're continuing the dialogue with them. And there's actually some really good news here. Um, Siemens recently helped them achieve a $9 million grant award from the Ontario Provincial Greenhouse Gas Reduction Grant. So in Canada, they're very progressive and they're starting to really focus on greenhouse gas reduction versus just energy efficiency or energy save. They want they not only want you to use less, but they really care about where that energy is coming from. So this is pretty exciting that we were able to help them get an additional $9 million in grant money. And they're going to use that to upgrade two satellite campuses to uh, increase their energy efficiency. And then they're also going to put in additional photovoltaic, uh, solar power, energy storage, and then some additional uh, microgrid control. Uh, along with that, they're going to continue to look at uh, demand response enhancements. They're going to set up more electric vehicle charging stations. And they're also going to do some pilots. Uh, two things they're looking at is generating renewable natural gas using um, biodigestion as well as hydrolysis, which creates uh, hydrogen fuel. A couple more slides here. This one is kind of, uh, this, this slide is to capture their vision on where they want to take their distributed energy system and their microgrid. And along with integrating the building management system and the cogeneration plant, they also want to integrate their solar power on site, their um, energy storage, as well as their EV charging stations. And I do want to point out that they're not trying to get off the grid. They are still strategically and collaboratively working with the electrical utility to maintain their resilience in case of disaster, as well as trying to figure out uh, the best way to interface with them. So that continues to happen in this scenario. Um, two more slides here. This one, uh, I wanted to point out that Dr. Uh, John Peterson and Dr. Austin Sheldon visited. They had the opportunity to visit Algonquin College on their last trip to DC. They visited March 5th, and um, they uh, were met with colder temperatures than DC and snow. So that was uh, notable to them, but they also got to tour the campus and see what uh, Algonquin College is doing. And these are actually some comments from Dr. Peterson. He gave them, he was gonna co-present. Uh, so I'll just summarize for him. He did note that uh, Algonquin College was remarkably similar in energy use and uh, energy, um, excuse me, college life, despite being a much larger campus in a cold climate, we saw the similarities with what they're doing and what UOG is doing. Um, the tour highlighted the transformation that combined energy conservation with alternative energy sourcing and cogeneration. So it was fairly holistic. 
Um, he was also impressed that the, the, the transformation partnership was able to include not only design and implementation, but also financing and long-range uh, development planning. The, the lasting impression for him was that the campus as a whole was an interpretive site. It had signs, brochures, displays, it all showed visitors and students and staff alike uh, about the living history of their sustainability program, how they started out in 2011 and how they progressed in 2017, now 2018. So that's the end of my presentation. I hope it gave you a nice summary of how Algonquin College and Siemens helped transform their campus. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, one last point. Um, so, uh, but basically, I just wanted to highlight again that they use technology combined with energy savings, combined with financing, and to really bring it all together uh, for them. Um, if you want more information, their website is www.algonquincollege.com forward slash sustainability. And that's all I had. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? Are there any questions from the audience? Blown away, right? <laughs> yes, blown away. Okay, we have one to the right, but um, Sorry, I speak loud. How much was the regents uh, as a percentage of the total? Uh, when you say region, which which system? Cogen. The cogen? Um, let's see, it's four megawatts. I, I don't actually know that, that total, but I would assume it was probably half, half the cost. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? All right, well, Amber will be available to the, oh, we have one more. Okay, yeah, I have a question. Uh, sure. How did you uh, line up Siemens to, uh, to help you do this? Because we need a Siemens here. We How have? did I line up Siemens? Okay. You mean, yeah. uh, how did Algonquin select Siemens? Or? Sorry? Is the question, how do you get Siemens on Guam? Or, no, no, no. Or I just how, how you lined up the financing. Uh, how, how you uh, went out and got them to be part of the, uh, the program. Sure. Sure. So uh, originally, Algonquin College uh, knew that they wanted to be more sustainable. And so they put out a solicitation. There was a, a preliminary um, request for qualifications. And then Siemens at that time competed to become their partner. And uh, once they were selected, then they basically had a, an open-ended term contract to keep honing the knife, so to speak, and keep doing these, phase, these additional phases of work. Does that make sense? All right, if there are no other questions, let's go ahead and give um, Amber another round of applause. Thank you again for coming to Guam to give us this presentation.